Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, David Richard. Welcome back to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I am so blessed to have you back today on Savvy Broadcasting. We're going to talk about how people can actually be the star of their own life. Uh, it's interesting because people, as we just said, or I just said before we hit the go button, is I think people get so into their life, they don't realize that, hello, you're running your life. You are the star of your own life. You don't have to wait to be the star of your own life. Um, but, you know, you're also a prominent author. I've written several books and uh, you have a new one you're just working on now, which I'm excited to uh, read when it comes out. Um, but share, if anyone missed our first interview, just a little bit about your backstory and uh, how you came to where you are today. Well, Christina, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much for having me on Savvy Radio. Gotcha. So I grew up in the military. Uh, my dad was a Marine for 31 years and we moved around the country. We lived uh, in Asia for a few years. And then uh, I joined the military after college served 15 years in the Marine Corps on active duty, was in Somalia, was part of Desert Storm, and wanted to get out and just kind of experience life away from the military. So I got out uh, in 2006, became a yoga instructor, and I went to work for corporate America. And then, gosh, six years ago, I realized my lifelong dream of publishing my first book. Wow. Isn't that something? Was that like a moment in time that, oh, I, I should be doing this and I'm just going to go for it? Or is it something that kind of revealed itself bit by bit where you realize, hey, I, I want to be an author? I So I had the dream of being an author when I was in high school. I Because we moved around so much, I fell in love with comic books. It was kind of one thing that I could take with me mm -hmm. um, because I couldn't take friends with me because this was well before the internet and things like that. So I just had a really overactive imagination and I wanted to write. I had some success in high school. I had a story that was published in North Carolina. It got national recognition um, in a magazine and that just really excited me. I had no idea how to be an author. I just didn't, growing up in the military, and I don't want to necessarily blame the military, but I just did not have the perspective of how did that happen. Yeah. And so even though I was an English major in college, uh, I knew that I wasn't going to be taken seriously because I was going to become a Marine and that was going to become the rest of my life. And that was kind of my plan. And then about 10 years into my military career, I started writing poetry again. I was inspired to write poetry and that's a weird conversation to have with Marines because most Marines don't write poetry. Um, but it was really exciting because it lit something inside me that really was part of who I always was and who I always wanted to be. So I made the decision to get out of the Marines in 2006. And it was exciting because I moved to one place. And for the first time in my life, I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not going to move. Like there's not going to be a time limit on how long I live at this place. And that was exciting to me because writing is kind of a habit and an art form unto itself, and you have to kind of do it persistently. Mm -hmm. The military didn't really allow for that. And so when I got out on my weekends, I would try to write horror stories because that's the genre that I really wanted to approach. And I did that for 11 years. And then after that 11 years, I read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And that book was the catalyst for me publishing my first book because in that book, he said, what is the purpose of your life? And the idea that my life had a compass that I could navigate by and mm -hmm. towards something was something of a foreign concept mm -hmm. that I would attribute it to just to the military, growing up in the military and then serving your life. I don't want to sound drastic, but it's expendable in a way. Like your life mm -hmm. is there to serve a greater cause, but much bigger than yourself. Um, and so the idea that I could kind of navigate and shape something was really exciting. So I abandoned my horror aspirations of being the next Stephen King and wrote a self-help book on helping people find their purpose in life, sharing my own examples of things that I had learned along the way. Mm -hmm. And finally published my first book in 2017. Wow. That is such a journey. And interestingly, because I think a lot of us kind of let ourselves go on autopilot and whether you're in the military or not, I think often we go into a corporate job often enough and we just allow it. To, I know for myself, I ended up working um, right after high school, helping out in a law firm and helping the accounting department do billing. 
can you help us really data entry? And so I started doing that. And then I put that first thing down on my resume. Ooh, look, accounting now. I can start putting something on my resume. Um, and then it just kind of grew from there. And we kind of let life take us instead of us directing our own life. And without realizing we have the access to be able to do that. And and also, I think also to speak to this, I think we're also multifaceted and our culture often will say, so what do you do for a living? Like all we do from work is all we are. And I think right. it's not just our work. Sometimes it's part of us, but it's we can be multifaceted and have many different um, passions and desires and gifts. I love that. Well, and it's so timely. I was on a coaching call earlier today and the client said, I want to, I know this is supposed to be focused on professional, but I'd like help in my personal life. Mm. And one of the things I said was, it's really interesting because we are multifaceted, but what that reveals about us is more of who we genuinely are when we can kind of spread mm. all of our feathers, if you will. Yeah. And what I find so interesting in based on what my client said and kind of what you just shared is people define themselves by what they do at work. And that's not who we are. That's a job. That's a title. Mm -hmm. And then that's why when you hear the kind of the contrast where people say, oh, I'm glad it's the weekend because I can let my hair down. And yeah. what they're really saying is I, could be I get to be I get to be myself because yeah. for eight, you know, for five days of the week, eight hours a day, I'm not. I'm some I'm some I'm a part that I feel like I have to be playing. And that's mm -hmm. it's a sad truth. But yeah. in order to kind of take the hail the helm of your life and really take over the ship, you have to look at all facets. You kind of have to look at your life holistically and say, okay, I want to be me in every aspect of my life and the greatest, best parts of me in every aspect of my life, even if that means that it's going to blossom and express itself differently. Mm -hmm. But how do I come forward so that I'm all of me all the time and delivering my best regardless of what the venue or delivery vehicle is? Ooh, that, that is so amazing, David. You know, this brings to mind for me, I remember many years ago, I was working for a tech company. I like working for media and tech because if I work in the accounting purposes in those two industries, they're really cool with me being more myself. And so uh, it comes to be one Monday morning, I'm talking to someone in the coffee area and someone said, so what did you do this weekend? I said, oh, I went flying to Nantica with my husband, he's a pilot. And then, you know, I did my podcast on Sunday and they're like, who, who the hell are you? Because <laughs> for them, they're like, yeah, you know, I rested, watched Netflix and ordered right. some food in. Um, but it's interesting. That's just what, you know, makes me happy. Um, but, you know, people don't realize you can be that star every day, whatever your, your gifts are, whether it's riding horses on the weekend or on your off time. Uh, it doesn't have to be, I just do accounting or I just do this. It can be uh, many different things. And it's it would be probably off, awesome if more businesses would allow people to let their hair down as it were and still get their job done i mean because you don't always have to look a certain part to have your employees you know be the best at what they do i love that and i will tell you so i spent 16 years at cisco and it is the coolest company and i remember coming out of the military it's you have a very conservative mindset because there are but like there are telephone books and those are books for people who are young enough not to know what they are that were really thick, but there are tons of regulations in the military telling you how long your hair can be, mm. if you can have facial hair, what you can wear when you're not in uniform, all kinds of stuff. Mm. And so going out, whenever I would wear like business casual to work, I have tattoos in my arms and I was always hypersensitive about showing off my ink because I just didn't think it was a corporate thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I just had this very sort of clean cut um, business person sort of mindset about what a corporate person was supposed to be. And I would say probably seven or eight years ago, I was walking in through one of the cafes in Cisco and there was a cool poster and it was show off your ink day. And it was like, mm -hmm. we want to see tattoos. And like Cisco is a cool place because the engineers these brilliant guys who have, you know, impacted the global economy because of the network work they do for Bank of America or these other financial giants, they wear cargo pants to work and like they wear flip flops and it's this very cool environment. Mm -hmm. But what you, what that also awakens in you is, yeah, they, like the more of you, you the more view you bring to an environment, whether it's work or whatever, mm -hmm. the better you're going to do in that environment. And Cisco kind of figured that out. And they have this really unique culture where it's, mm -hmm. we want your diversity. We want different perspectives on things because that's what makes stuff better. And 
it was fascinating the last three or four years I had the good fortune to work kind of in the belly of the company where we make the products and the services and things like that. And what you come to appreciate is people have marginalized ego in that environment because it's all about, I have information that you need to do your job and you have information that I need. If we can exchange authentically, it's almost like we used to have a a name, uh, a slogan for the company used to be the human network. And that's kind of what it is. You realize it's not about ego or ulterior motives. It's about how effectively can I communicate so that we can both kind of raise the ships. And that's kind of the approach that people have to take for life is, you know, the whole premise behind when we think of movie stars, a lot of times we think about them from our perspective as a fan. Like we think of them glowing and yeah. you kind of have to put yourself in the movie star. What they're not glowing, they're projecting. The reason we pay movie stars millions of dollars is because they are willing to have emotions and express themselves in scenarios that most people think too fantastic. And they do it to such a degree that we believe that what they're experiencing is real. Mm-hmm. And that level of soulfulness, I would say, kind of in sort of really kind of getting into your physiology and bodying a character. So to so much so that millions of people across the planet are going to pay money to see you perform that role. We all have that capability. And I'm not saying we need to have that extreme, like you don't need to have the world of the world and, you know, the roof is on fire kind of thing. But, but that expression is the projection of light that other people want to see because it helps us relate to one another. And that's why movie stars are so successful, but we all have that ability to be successful within us. And I feel like we're living in the best time in human history to make that happen. Mm. You know, I, I love that you say that because I I wondered why people are so excited by celebrity. And, but I recall one thing that I really love is dance. And there was a dance teacher who was a master uh, in her field and I saw her dance and what's interesting is we think of actors as just oh yeah I take the script and I just read it and whatever but no uh, when I saw this woman dance she became that piece of music like it became the essence of her it came out of her and yep. I think the same goes true for the arts and, and actors and whatever they they are not just pretending they are that person that being and and you get to experience that with them um, and so we all want to be able to experience greater in our life instead of just going on that, as I call it, the hamster wheel of life, letting it exactly. pull us through life. Instead, we want to actually experience the full potential. And uh, so where does someone, let's say they're listening and they're like, I'm just on a humdrum. I feel like life is just has a hold of me. How do I begin to get in contact with my full potential and, and start to live that? Where Where do they even start? Yeah, the first thing I like to do is ask, what is the plot? Mm -hmm. Like your life is a movie. Mm -hmm. And what has been the plot of your life so far? Has it been, I do a corporate thing from nine to five, Monday through Friday, and then I go party with my friends. Mm -hmm. And I've got that as my routine. And I can't understand why life isn't making more magic for me. And that could be a lot of lies. But it's, what would the plot, if you ask that question, then the next question is, well, what would make for an interesting plot? Like what would really captivate you and give you a version of yourself that you want to step into? Because that's ultimately when we talk about movies, every movie in some shape or form is a story of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Jerry Maguire or, you know, Iron Man in Marvel, it's a hero's journey where the character starts out one way and they end completely differently because they've grown and gone through that journey. Well, Mm -hmm. art imitates life and we all are on that journey in some shape or form. So what's been the plot of your story so far? What is a compelling plot that would get you excited about becoming a better version of yourself? And then how do you kind of start putting the script together or developing the character to become that version of yourself? Mm, That is fascinating. And, you know, I I don't know if this could help as well, but I remember someone saying to me when I had a similar question many years ago, I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. And she's like, how about you just start writing down? What do you find? What do you, what excites you? It could cost you money or not. Like, I like to go to the movies. I like to pet cats and dogs, whatever it is, just write it down. And then you begin to get in touch with what what excites you, what's exciting to you and makes you happy. Um, And then through exploring that, I found over and over again, I kept coming with, I love connecting and talking and being with people. It's like, great. Keep writing about that. I'm like, yeah, but that, 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 what what do I do with that? And years later, here's what I do with that. But right. right. (laughs) But see, you know, sometimes it doesn't just like, boom, you're going to get this in five minutes. Sometimes it's going to take a little while of uh, self-exploratory 
effort to go through it and just, you know, figure that out for yourself. Absolutely. Well, and it's such a great example, right? I, I was so excited when I got out of the Marines because I knew, okay, I can start writing. And I wanted to get my corporate thing figured out because obviously that's where my focus was in terms of earning salary. Mm -hmm. And I started writing and I would come up with an idea and it was cool because I was living in this nice suburb outside of Raleigh, North Carolina, and it had woods and forests. And so I kind of got a feel for the place. And that was where my inspiration was going to be because mm -hmm. writers write what they know kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I did that. I would I wrote about 100 pages and then I couldn't figure out how to take the story further. The characters were shallow and kind of flimsy to me. And I didn't really understand how to breathe life into a character to, like we talked about earlier, kind of make it real. Mm -hmm. So I put it aside, went back to work, 12 months passed and I kept doing that. And it was so frustrating because I was like, what is like, what do I need to change? And when I read Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and it was like, OK, is it more important that I'm a horror writer or that I'm a published author? And it was, I want published author. Like I, I, I feel like I want to contribute in a way that's going to bring meaning to people's lives. And the first book, international bestseller, number one on Amazon, I thought like I have just dismounted off the high balance and I am here. Mm -hmm. And about a week after the book launch, someone who helped me out with the launch said, well, how are you going to help people? Mm. And I hadn't thought that through. Like I was like, oh, I didn't realize that I needed to have like a, he's like, you need a platform. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a wake up call for me. It was like, well, shoot, am I going to just help people find their purpose? Cause I feel like that's been done. I mean, there's the secret, there's all these kind of books. That was sort of my hallucination was that work has already been covered. And so I was like, well, I want to do this in a unique way. That led me to my second book, which was more in line with the alchemist in that it was fiction, but it was fiction with a message about if you really want to master this thing called your mind, you have to take ownership of it and become conscious of who you are all the time. You can't just, like you said earlier, go on autopilot because that's what so many people do. And that was a huge wake up for me. But it also, my journey as a writer, I remember I, I, I struggled with writing. It was hard for me for some reason after, you know, living in email and text for so long, it was hard to kind of put extended thoughts down on paper. It was a straight, like, I'm like, why, why is this so foreign a concept? I just can't understand it. But it was, it was hard to kind of articulate that and really use your imagination. Mm -hmm. And my second book enabled me to do that. And what I realized was I need to just write with no expectation that what I'm going to write is going to be published, but I just need to write, like I need to become a master at writing and putting my thoughts down on paper so that the things that I'm coming up with up here, make it down as intact as possible when pen hits paper. And that is a, that is a process. Like I, for my last book, I wrote a thousand pages by hand trying to figure out how to tell the story. And I did it over two years and it was, beautiful because I stretched and grew so much, not just as a writer, but as a human being to be able to kind of figure out, okay, this is how I'm going to tell the story. And it's a great realization that like, I wanted to be a writer and then life kind of said, okay, this is what that means. Mm -hmm. And it was this huge sort of challenge. Is this what you really want? Because this is the story that you're going to get. And that's the beauty is we want life to be easy. Like mm -hmm. people want life to be easy. And you can do that. And it's, you talked about it earlier, but if we want to take, a, if we want to take control of our own ship, then you can't be on a cruise line with someone else steering it for you. Like you can't be living like holiday. You kind of have to get into the game and become really proactive. And for me still to this day, I don't do as much as I did for the last book, but I still love journaling by hand because it is in some ways it is the most intimate form of communication we can have with ourselves and with whatever we think is greater than us. Wow. And, you know, it's so true in this world where it's become uh, short and TikTok videos, I think we've become so used to instant information, instant stories that you're like, oh, now I've got to tell my story, but I don't know how to do it in anything that isn't short form. Like right. I I've had the same experience. I'm like, whoa, this is a lot harder putting the ideas and the pictures and, and whatever into um, a book. So yeah, there's a process to that. So I love that you're sharing that. Well, we could go on a lot longer, but we are coming to an end. I don't want anyone to leave without finding out how they can get a copy of all your books and work with you. How can they do that? Sure. So I'm available at davidrichardsauthor.com. Uh, my books are all for sale there. 
you can reach out to me if you want me to come speak to you or coaching is available there as well. Uh, I'm on Instagram at David Richards author as well. Awesome. And when you're working on a new book now, when's the next one due to come out? Uh, I am looking at this. So I'm about halfway done. Um, I would say probably November, December. My last one came out December 8th and I might do that one again, just because uh, that date has special meaning to me. So, And what will be the topic of the next one? So it's actually a sequel to my last one. So my last one, I did something that was I feel very cool. I brought superheroes into the Bible story, mm. um, but I did it in a way that makes them relevant and cool historically as well as in today. And so mm. the next book is a continuation of that. And you find out a little bit more about uh, my version of Thor, the God of Thunder. So. Ooh, neato. I, I can't wait to check it out. Everyone, please go to David Richards author.com get a copy of his books today i thank you so much for coming to share again on, on savvy this has been brilliant for anyone who's just sitting on the fence saying how can i have more or express more of my full potential you've given them some food for thought thanks for coming to savvy broadcasting christina it's been a pleasure thank you so much like subscribe and share this episode to listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com to find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest email christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com